Okay, speakers, could you could you please have a seat, please, up front? Isaac and I, please have a seat. I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marilyn Cade. We're just going to get started, and before I turn it over to our moderator, I'm going to issue the operating instructions, and that is come sit in the front of the room, please. If you don't mind moving up a couple of rows and encouraging people to sit up closer so that we can see all of you. And then when you are speaking, uh, always open with saying your name very slowly and clearly and look at the transcript and make sure it's correct so that we can make sure that the transcript, which is not an official record, but is a, a very useful document, is actually reflecting who said what. We want to have as few women speaking or man speaking introductory comments as possible. So come sit at the front of the room, if you would, and say your name clearly whenever you speak. And we're going to get started in just one minute.
Please come down toward the front and take a seat. Hello, everyone. Uh, let's get started there. This is the uh, NRA Global Session Fake News, and Tuesday, 13 November, uh, in UNESCO. Welcome to everybody. Uh, today, we're going to discuss about the fake news, and then I direct, I direct to start with some introduction of the speakers, panelists, and then we're going to uh, dive in the how we. Uh, how we deal with the fake news. First, first of all, we're going to uh, hear or circulate or sharing information what kind of the fake news in fact they own each country. Uh, probably I ex assume that each of the IGF has a, uh, their own workshop session in their own country. Uh, in South Korea, all I did. And then uh, we will uh, also ask uh, each panelist how can we combat how can we combat or uh, circum some kind of the uh, 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 fake news problem. And then third one is that we're going to, how we, uh, as Brazilian IGF suggest, how can we uh, suggest the multi-host stakeholder model or some kind of collaboration model to shake, uh, to shake to some pro uh, the robust energy of the fake news. Okay, first, first of all, I, uh, from, the, from the my left side, uh, I'd like to introduce some Nigerian Isaac, could you please see your name and the interest report, please? please. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Uduma. I'm from Nigeria, and I coordinate the Nigerian IGF as well as the West African IGF. Thanks. Giacomo Mazzone from the Italian IGF here today. I'm Luis Fernando Castro from the CGI, that is Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uriel Ansipura from the ISOC Finland and from the Finnish Internet Forum and also from the Jordic. And then we have uh, one more uh, panelist here from Chile. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm the chief catalyst of the IGF USA. My name is Claire Melanie Popino. I'm from France, uh, from the Ministry of Justice. Okay, my name is Yun Chang Choi. I'm a representative of the South Korea's NRI, not North Korea. Okay, and then uh, let's get it started. Uh, fake news. Uh, we are living the age of the social media, and then I say, I would say. Internet is different from the original version. Today's or internet is uh, totally well connected and we uh, connected the, the internet by smartphone and then in human history, there has never been an age like this. Circulate or disseminate the information in a, in a speed of light, whole of the world. And then uh, people believe that what they see, people believe what they hear and then People, what people hear, formulate what they believe, what and what they believe, effect affecting to the what they behavior. This is functioning logic of the fake news. What if somebody intentionally give a huge fake information or or redacted or fabricate or manipulate information to somebody? What if, so, why, what, if they, what if two social groups hit each other? What if a social group just intimidated by the other and then actively uh, involved in some kind of their uh, quarreling or some kind of their in this unproductive discussion all over the world? That is not the world we can expect. And then I'd like to suggest uh, each family is how can their own country uh, has a kind of fake news problem. For example, I've never been in Kenya, but I heard that Kenya has a 
uh, struck down the social media for three days for, before election. Is it a reasonable idea to solve? Or in South Korea, there's a kind of the, uh, voice we should uh, invoke a much more harder law, harder law, and then punish much more harder, and, and so that people just worry about their own fake news dissemination. Is it a good solution? We better discuss about because because it's not there's no solution clearly. And then before studying a uh, decision, I'd like to exclude several uh, similar concept. For example, I'd like to uh, exclude the concept of misinformation because uh, misinformation is the mistakenly wrote and mistakenly uh, uh, formulated by journalists. Okay, and then I'd like to uh, exclude also defamation. Defamation is that every country has a rule for defamation and that we better not discuss the defamation itself. And totally, we do not need to understand the some kind of video literacy problem because this uh, video literacy uh, is uh, not the perfect solution for the uh, global regulators and then it's a, it's a matter of there's some journalists, okay? And then, okay, let's get started. And then can you hear from the Nigerians idea and then they own Wakusha on the fake news recently, please? What kind of the impact do you have? What kind of negative impact do you have in fake news in Nigeria, please? Or West Africa, the other country, please? Okay, thank you very much. First, I want to tell us that we have um, issues of violence, issues of terrorism, issues of uh, hate, issues of um, 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 bad attitude, difficult ones. So the, for us, it looks like the social media is dividing us instead of uniting us. And for that reason, my government is making all efforts to regulate, to control, to even criminalize fake news propagators. Uh, with photo shoots, with Instagram, with all the social media, you can twist anything okay. against and come up with any story that would uh, affect right. individuals, well, it could be anonymous. And since it's on the social media, the person that has generated the news, you don't know. So what, we, what is happening in our own environment is that we are creating hatred. We are creating uh, problems, difficult problems, difficult times for our people because our young people are recruited online to go for terrorism. And how do they do it? They will just publish one or two things that they think the government has done or somebody has done and they ask that you rise and uh, stand against such things. And they are misinformation. And so we're looking at the social media dividing us the more, dividing us because we have about 500 languages in Nigeria. We have about 200 ethnic groups. So each group wants to, to, to be seen and to be heard and to be, uh, to be uh, active and to be, uh, be part of what is happening. But in the process, we disabuse young people's mind and they take up arms. We have the Boko Haram and how, how are they thriving because there's the, the, the social media. So my country, my, my government is so concerned that they are asking that if they, if, if they will ever, if they will ever lay their hands on the person that have posted the, the hate speech, the person should go to prison. So it is as bad as that. That's the way we are looking at it. So, so it's not only that the news are fake, but they are causing a lot of problems, a lot of war, internal war, internet, internal, internal hatred, 
And uh, we are on the political era. Well, we're going to hold a uh, national, uh, national the, the general election in February. And as of today, the news, they, they come with all sorts of news and uh, people will just swallow it and uh, take up arms. And, um, you know, it, it, it's not been good. It's not been good. So we are very much concerned on how to get the right information to our people to know what government or any person running for an office is really doing. Some, a, 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 a sitting governor was, was shown in the news, in the in Facebook, uh, shown taking bribe, taking bribe. And that has cost him, or is almost costing him his seat because um, the, the, the state assembly is, is investigating him. And it, it could be a wrong, a wrong information, misinformation. So we are actually looking at how do we control this? How do we manage the wrong information? How do we manage the hate speech, in particular the hate speech? Because um, ethnic group is fighting against the other ethnic group. So that's where we are for now. I will, I will talk more when we come the second round. Thank you. Thanks, Nigeria. Nigeria. Next one is the Brazilian uh, it internet strategy content. Uh, his name is Luis, and the you please. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to to say that it's a big pleasure to be part of this session. I'm Luis Fernando Castro. I am a member of the board of the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. I represent the government, the Ministry of Science and Technology. The CGI, maybe most of you may know what we do. We are a multi-stakeholder organization and we are entitled of developing uh, general guidelines and developing overarching projects in favor of the use of internet in the country. We also organize the Brazilian IGF, which took place in the city of Goiânia last week. We had about uh, 30 uh, workshops that have been proposed uh, by the community and many of them addressed the question, the, 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 the issue of the fake news and information disorder. That's a, a very present uh, discussion. And I may say that we are still in the same point we were one year ago in, during the IGF of uh, Geneva. About this issue, uh, CGI uh, made something very important. We had a, a very, very tough election in Brazil this year. And in the beginning of the year, uh, the electoral uh, court that manages the process of election in Brazil uh, created a advisory border uh, to treat the question of fake news. And we from the CGI, we were invited to, take, to be part of this uh, committee and our main preoccupation at that moment is to avoid censorship during the campaign. In the first moment, the, the tribunal or the court, they wanted to, to take a very, very conservative or uh, to control content. And we had members in this, in this group that came from the army, from the federal police, from the national security department and we were afraid to, to, to raise situations that could bring to censorship and to criminalize the, the, the net. And I could say that they realized that it's impossible to avoid uh, fake news and that we have to treat them in, uh, after it occurs, not before. Uh, in the Brazilian uh, electoral law, we have the crime of uh, spreading uh, fake news, false information against candidates or parties. And it's, we decided not to work in a preventive way to, to avoid the free speech that could harm the liberty of expression. Uh, to prepare uh, this document uh, or, or all this 
knowledge. Uh, the CGI organized in April 2018 a seminar <coughs> involving uh, different and several mu different multi-stakeholders like <coughs> journalists, lawyers, social scientists, and authorities, members of the, the, the court, uh, electoral court, and many questions were raised. And with them, we could produce a guideline that I, I have here, the one that want them, I, we have some copies here, that uh, explain a little, first, how the social networks operate, the business models that are adopted by internet companies to explore data economy, uh, we treated about uh, democracy, elections, political propaganda, and the phenomenon of online disinformation. The third part uh, shows uh, some principles that must be observed during this discussion, like freedom of speech and combat to, to hate speech. And in the fourth chapter, we give some tips for the user how to avoid uh, spreading or uh, being part of a chain of uh, fake news. And in the fifth uh, part of the, the guideline, we compile uh, some other sources of information that might interest people for further discussions. And we found very important to, to bring this document and this knowledge to the members of the justice, electoral justice. And we had the opportunity to share uh, with them in some seminars organized with the, the court to explain to the judges and, and, and to the assistants that would uh, deal with this matter during elections uh, to separate what is, uh, what is uh, reasonable or, and what is not reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd like to bring if someone has interest in getting the, 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 the guidelines, we have it here. Okay. Also in our uh, website, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, next one is the Giacomo Maggiore, Italian IGM piece. He's referencing European Broadcasting Union also. Thank you. Yes, as has been said, I am one of the members of the Italian IGF editorial committee and also a member of Eurobid, but Eurobid I will leave it to Urio to say better. We have the Italian IGF um, in November, at the beginning of November, from the 5th to the 7th uh, in Rome. And um, Okay. Could you speak a little bit louder, please? Now is better? Okay, sorry. So the, um, we had this at the beginning of the year, the, this month, the IGF in Italy, and um, this was just the arrival point of um, any other meetings uh, during the year, because also in Italy this year was an electoral year, so as you can imagine, the debate on... Uh, on the propagation of fake news uh, was a very hard topic for everybody and has been treated in many, many different uh, events. Um, there was no proper committee uh, to prepare it, um, not multi-stakeholder. There was one committee at the level of the security services in Italy to monitor interference from foreign country. But because in Italy the electoral system is proportional, uh, then the effect of the fake news, so-called fake news, uh, cannot be so big. As you know, the, the, the effectiveness of this is more where there are very small margin of um, difference between parties that can or candidates that could make the difference. Um, on the, the debate that um, took place in Italy uh, started from one point, that first we don't uh, accept at all the principle of um, the word fake news, because fake news is simply the top of the iceberg of a larger phenomenon. Um, we, have, uh, we have adopted as um, an, uh, tools for analysis two documents, one is the Council of Europe report on information disorder that um, was distributed yesterday uh, in this same room for the Council of Europe uh, EBU meeting, and also the um, a document that has been published that is called the Perfect Storm about the crisis of media and information in, in the current digital society. The total, the global problem is composed by many elements. One is the disruption of the business model of the traditional media. 
the, the, the economic basis and fundament for that. The second is the weakening of the journalistic profession everywhere in the world, uh, either for economic reason, either for um, also question of safety. As you know, the, the number of journalists or pe people working in information that has been killed in the last months and years has increased dramatically in many parts of the world, even in parts of the world that before were um, setting aside of that. In Europe, just to mention, after many years with no journalists killed, we have uh, four investigative journalists killed in various countries of Europe. So that's quite alarming for a part of the world that has been protected in, uh, for many years. And then uh, there is an, a growing mistrust in institutional sources. Any institutional source uh, is seen as suspect as part of uh, the establishment and the media are considered in many countries as part of the establishment. This creates a very bad atmosphere. Um, the election in Italy went quite well. There was only one episode in which the has been detec detected uh, heavy interference from uh, from outside um, uh, interest, uh, and it was in the post-election moment when there was the negotiation for creating the new the new government, um, and there has been interference, uh, heavy interference has been measured and registered, uh, even if this is not. The data about it has not been revealed by the government, but um, has been said that there are. Um, and in the meantime, the national regulator that is called AGICOM, um, the Authority for the Communication, um, has started a, a, a table of um, discussion and self-regulation with the main operator of the internet platforms and of the telecom operators and the media. This group. Uh, has worked uh, for one year and uh, after one year we'll arrive to some conclusion at the end of this year and uh, the regulator will decide if mm, the self-regulation measures has been enough or if they go to um, hard regulation with proposal to the, go to the parliament. Um, we discussed all these things in, um, in, uh, at the IGF and, uh, and in other fora during the last weeks. Uh, the government seems to be unsatisfied of what has been obtained by the platform because there, is, there has been no real commitment and hard commitment. So it's very likely that mm, they will go for legislation during next year. Thank okay. You. okay, thank you. And then we'll have uh, one more uh, European speaker. He's, uh, his name is Uriel, and, and then he's representing European DAL, uh, regional IGF. Thank you. Okay, if you can hear that clearly, you, have, you, you can use some headphone, headset inside the beneath of your, and then because it's a uh, head kind of the speaking system kind of a problem. Okay, please. Yeah, thank you. Good, no, good morning. Uh, my name is Yrjö Lansipuro, uh, one of those impronounceable and difficult to write Finnish names, but then <laughs> anyway. Uh, they, uh, I'm here representing Yorodi, which is the, uh, which was set up in 2008, pretty much by improvisation, uh, in this very town in in in, in Paris, uh, uh, and uh, we were a few people, uh, ten people, just gathering in a street cafe uh, somewhere outside the ICANN meeting and just uh, decided that uh, since there is IGF, there could also be a European dialogue on internet governance. Uh, one of the many, many offspring of, the, of this internet governance forum. Now, uh, the Eurodig at its annual meetings, we have been uh, treating the, this problem uh, act actually since 2015, but uh, it's interesting that how it developed. First, we first the theme was media in digital age, and 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 somehow being aware of the problems that the 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 rise of social media uh, caused to the to the traditional media 
and, and how that I influences the content. Uh, next year, that is to say 2016, we uh, already asked would we need the gatekeepers back uh, because there is so much hate speech uh, in 2016. The, the emphasis was really on hate speech, not so much on fake news, which was very much the, 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 uh, the theme next year, 2017, uh, the post-truth and all that. But uh, last year, uh, I think that we, with the help of the Council of Europe and, and some other studies, we, we ca came to understand that actually information disorder, which is the term we prefer, uh, information disorder is much more than just fake news because it covers um, misinformation, which is when false information is shared but no harm is really meant. And disinformation, where false information is knowingly shared to cause harm in a sort of, in, in a one, one way of, of, of hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, politics and hybrid warfare. And finally, malinformation, which is, which is, uh, Maybe genuine information, genuine uh, things that that, uh, that uh, is spread in order to in order to cause harm. So, in order to find effective remedies, we have to be clear why this information is intentionally created, promoted, and amplified in the first instance. And often it aims to hollow out and discredit democracy, uh, which can only thrive if people uh, can make informed choices. And so the, the, these methods are more indirect and ingenious and dubious than those of propaganda. I mean, propaganda, usually they try to make you believe a certain version of what's out there, what's happening. And that was pretty difficult, as we found, uh, as I found, d being a correspondent during the Cold War. Uh, but now, the, uh, if, you sp if you're spreading disinformation, your task is much easier, because actually you don't, you don't even want people to believe those stupid things you are saying. The only thing is to, you ha wa want to uh, spread confusion, you want to sort of disorient people and, and basically uh, come to a situation where, where facts lose their value. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Yuria. And then I'm going to pass to my mic to the Chilean IGA, please. <coughs> France has a proactive uh, position on regulation in cyberspace. French President uh, Macron, yesterday during the EGF uh, opening session, advocated for more regulation. He also announced a six-month uh, partnership with Facebook, uh, aiming at figuring out how to find against hate speech on the social network. France has taken an active uh, approach in both regulating and partnering with the stakeholders. In that respect, Paris calls for trust and security in cyberspace and to tackle cyber threats, including manipulation of information. And in France, uh, a low kind of crackdown on so-called fake news is being discussed by the parliament. To date, uh, the Nas National Assembly approved the law 10 October and the Senate rejected it on November 6th after a joint commission uh, failed to reach an agreement. The National Assembly, which has the final say, uh, is very likely to approve the, fina the final reading. The, the bill could, could still be challenged by the, the France Consti Constitutional Council of a potential incursion in free speech. 
Uh, indeed, uh, there, there are a lot of controversial uh, uh, debate. Um, for example, some, uh, some uh, member of parliament accused President Macron of trying to create a thought police that threatened freedom of speech, uh, freedom of expression, and could be compared to censorship. Also, journalists have warned the law could be used to hamper reporters' work. Uh, and uh, in practice, the new law will, if, if, uh, if approved and when approved, will impose a quick response judicial review called referé uh, of potentially manipulative information shared during electoral periods. The bill also want to impose transparency uh, obligations to online platforms. And during the debate, a number of experts uh, criticized the law as being a threat uh, and to be hasty and ineffective and um, hinted that media education, in particular youth media education, could be part of the solution. In a way, indeed, fighting against fake news most likely need a form of social digital literacy and for example why do we share fake news to understand it is the first step to fight it and to stop it hence the need for digital literacy skills um, for such an approach uh, to be success successful it is needed one to to raise public awareness through campaign and initiatives, and two, it needs education to first and foremost help develop critical thinking. Uh, really, uh, fake news is maybe new in the form and modality, but is a well-known matter uh, from the, uh, we can choose any, any century, uh, 17th century, 18th century. Uh, I like to, to, to say that already Fontenelle, uh, great philosopher Spinoza, uh, already uh, uh, have thought ab about uh, this kind of misinformation, disinformation. And today, the citizen needs to be a kind of philosopher uh, and a techno. techno uh, have the technology awareness, and this is so both both aspects, critical mind and technology knowledge, uh, which need to be developed to really uh, fight against and before the fake news arrive. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the, your uh, delivering your idea about the French IGF. This is her name is Claire, and then I will hear we will hear the uh, some opinion from the Madeline Cade from USA IGF. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. I mentioned that my title is Chief Catalyst of IGF USA. I actually helped found IGF USA, but today I serve in a, a different role. Um, we have been looking at uh, this particular um, phenomenon now for three years, and um, I perhaps would need to open my comments by apologizing for any contribution, any particular individual uh, located in my country who might ho hold an elected official position has made to the proliferation uh, and misuse of the term fake news. So I'll open with that apology, and trust me, I don't contribute to that proliferation. We, <laughs> we uh, did a um, main session and a series of workshops in 2017 and repeated that again in uh, with workshops in 2018, and my prediction is we'll continue to work on this particular area uh, going forward for all the reasons you've heard. We do look at a, uh, within IGF USA, um, we do look at a um, uh, more of a, a spectrum of definitions, including the misinformation, disinformation, and um, actual um, distribution of false information that is from a source that is identified as being with the media, either the, um, uh, I hate to 
maybe the more formal media is the right word to use, or the uh, new form of um, uh, expression such as blogs, et cetera. We purposely do not address cyber warfare in the discussions that we um, um, take up at IGF USA, and that is a purposeful decision because of the uh, range of U.S. agencies and others that we would have to include should we be moving into discussions about cyber warfare. Um, we also um, have been examining some of the, I'm going to call them tactics as opposed to solutions uh, that need to be taken in order to uh, help the individual user who is receiving the information uh, be able to be a more discerning, informed user. It was relatively easy when the, um, you had a uh, narrower and more centralized um, approach to distributing information, such as broadcast media, uh, newspapers that were acknowledged as being the official newspaper, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then people would make up their mind whether or not they trusted the source but information, as we all know, was much more centralized. And if you wanted to know how to spell a word, then you pulled out your dictionary. Um, if you wanted to look for the official description of what a dinosaur was, you pulled out your encyclopedia. And of course, we all know that the internet, the World Wide Web, digitization has made access to information much, much uh, easier, and that's the good news. But the bad news is that the skills needed to be a discerning uh, consumer of information sources are not being taught at any level in our education systems, really regardless of the country you're living in. Um, and it's, there have been debates for some time about whether there should be a sort of a, um, in the United States, um, many states require um, young people when they're the age of 15 and a half through 16, 17, in their high school to take a, it is a mandated course to learn to drive in the school. And you have to pass a test, you get a credit for that. Um, there's been a long series of debates about whether digital literacy skills and uh, critical thinking skills should also be incorporated into the curriculums. So that is an emerging discussion that I would just mention to everyone because if you are talking to the, um, if you get it out, our, out of our silo approach and we start thinking more horizontally, then I think what we've been talking about at a very high level at IGF USA is we really need to go back and re-engineer and uh, update curriculum at a variety of levels, and that includes at the very fundamental level in the school where children are taught how to turn on the iPad or the uh, electronic device, but they're not necessarily, and they're taught perhaps to avoid uh, porno sites, but they're not necessarily taught how to be a critical thinker, and it's one of the big debates going on in the, uh, in the ethics community and in the education community. So being an informed user of information, our, our belief right now, our discussion right now is that we have to start thinking about how to retrofit the understanding of all users of the internet, regardless of their age, and that includes users of the internet of people of my generation. Uh, and how, you have to think about how you do that. How do you, how do you teach people the critical information skills? And do there need to be uh, community-wide or um, uh, society-wide tools, such as mandated fact-checking, or such as a trust mark, which says this information has been fact-checked? And I'm not being critical of Wikipedia, but I just want to make a comment. Uh, I think Wikipedia is a fantastic resource. But in the courses I teach, I do not allow my students to use Wikipedia as a primary source. They can use it as an initial source, but not as a uh, documented source, because some of the articles are extremely well researched and others are um, the product of the opinions of those who have found the time to contribute to them. So 
fact checking and whether that there needs to be some sort of kind of government um, or even um, uh, industry approach to certifying fact checkers is one of the things we've been debating. We have no conclusions. We think that reform of uh, and teaching digital literacy, we also think there may need to be almost public awareness campaigns that you need to check your facts before you, the final thing I'm gonna say is far too many people uh, get their information from their neighbor and they think their neighbor is a trusted source. And on the internet, your neighbor may be somebody who actually is a dog. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, this, uh, for the late comments, I'd like to reiterate the purpose of this session. This session is the part of the global effort to tackle the fake news problem or intentional disinformation. Uh, we uh, now heard the kind of the uh, impact of the uh, fake news in this country from the ethnic group violence and to the uh, information disorder and the 2018 presidential election in Brazil. And then some, and I, I'd like to add some kind of the fake news video, uh, fake news video with uh, algor algorithmized uh, AI produced uh, fake voice with together. And then uh, we have a running up time and then I will give uh, some kind of the right to the floor and then if you wanted to say raise your hand and then please push the, your button and then give uh, give a question to me and then and after 10 minutes uh, uh, for the 10 minutes we can randomly allocate some who going to answer your question okay please I will have uh, some four people about who have uh, some question about fake news solution please Raise your hand and then tell your uh, country, please. Okay, you. Um, good morning, I'm Harsh. I'm a youth IGA fellow from ISOC. Um, my question is, could somebody please touch upon uh, using uh, the power of free speech and basically combating fake news by counter speech? Is there anybody? Can you please, can you please do this? Okay, yep. Okay, please. Hello. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Emanuela. I'm a youth ISOC fellow and I'm from Brazil. Uh, I, I want to talk about the last commentary about uh, the fact that we have to change education. We have this big problem of fake news in Brazil, but we are also being threatened in the education sense because we have like uh, parties saying that we should not teach ideological things in school, which is impossible because I don't think we can have an education that is not ideological. Even if you try to take this off, this is some type of ideology. So we don't have the interest of talking about fake news and talking about this kind of stuff in school, politically and critically thinking because some parties are being benefited from spreading fake news. So how do you enter this kind of environment? How do you do this critical education without being accused of, uh, with, because, mm. well, mm. if you say that something is true or not true, today mm. in Brazil you are being tagged as a communist mm. or you are being tagged as someone mm. who is speaking about things that you shouldn't be speaking and you should be neutral, but this is impossible. So how do we enter this environment? Thank you. Okay, okay we will hear one more last one. Is there any from the different continent, from Asia, kind of? Okay, please. Yeah, Steve Zeltzer from the United States, um, LaborNet, APC. I, I agree with the speaker about President Trump and his use of fake news, although you did not mention the name. Uh, the problem that we have is that governments are, are presenting fake news, um, and they, uh, they are uh, being challenged, and even when they're challenged, uh, people are being punished. You look in Turkey, uh, where journalists are being jailed, killed, uh, for reporting the facts of what's going on. This is a danger. And the use of social media by corporations uh, to present their agenda is another issue. Uh, U.S. companies and large companies have made a lot of money from fake news, selling this fake news and making money from uh, people who are paying for the fake news. I, I think the other danger that we have is a, a censorship uh, of news and information. Uh, and I think the threat uh, that uh, the, the government is going to decide what is fake or corporations are going to decide what is fake is a dangerous conception because the governments and corporations have an agenda. And I think the 
uh, I agree totally with the attack on journalism and journalists today uh, in the United States. Thousands of journalists have lost their job and people are go to the internet to find out information uh, from people, regular people who are not trained journalists. Okay. And that okay. has to do with capitalism and the attack on okay. uh, the press. Okay, Thank you. okay please, uh, we have no time. I assume you're definitely not a Republican, okay. Okay, I, for the solution, I'd like to mention a little bit, uh, several things. The we can, to, to uh, coffee this, the fakeness problem, we will stress maybe manual literacy, or somebody think it's kind of too naive because it's in effect too much. And the st secondly, we, do we need to some criminalize fake news a lot? The invoking the very harsh law, and then third one is that can we can we f f can you can you formulate some kind of the can you installize some kind of institution of the fake news checkers or fact checkers, or we can totally trust some self regulation? Do you believe it's not? But many many platform has a has a gaining their money from the clickbait. Whatever it is true or not, they just need the people's click. As much as they click, they get uh, much more advertised money. And then third one, uh, fourth one is that do we need to trust some algorithm to detect the fake news? And Google or Facebook also, also doing this, but many engineers have allowed on it. And third one, uh, next one is that do we need some install uh, the introduction of the platform liability? That means we need to inter we need to get back to again to the gatekeepers law like the traditional media with the uh, the newsroom and journalists together or yeah there's a lot more uh, answers to this question but and then i will give i will give her a chance to the Madeline to summarize uh, your questions and then i will ask them to answer the question um marilyn kate speaking um there, we are operating under the flag of the United Nations, and that's a, a new behavior for many of you. Um, but under the uh, rules in which we operate, we try to uh, not single out particular uh, companies or um, individuals, uh, but to think about this as a more generic uh, problem. And I say that because it's going to influence how I couch my responses. Um, I, um, I wonder, you know, we've heard a number of ideas about solutions, Chair, and I wonder if we might um, almost have a, like a mini 30-second uh, uh, show of hands of do people in the room and uh, do people in the room think that more government uh, direct oversight of the content on the web. Remember, we're actually not talking about the internet. The internet is the transport mechanism. We're talking about the web. We're talking about the content that is stored in uh, sites that are uh, developed by individuals. Now, social media is a transport mechanism, really, which is transporting and proliferating the spread of the information. But are we thinking that we should begin to look at either principles, and if we do that, how do we do that on a global basis? Are we thinking that we're ready to move toward um, um, outright regulation of what you can or cannot post? And then you get into the issue of what is determined to be freedom of expression, et cetera. What is fake news and how do you determine that? Those are long-term um, issues that would have to be studied, thought about, and will uh, move us very, very directly into an environment where governments are talking only to themselves and sometimes in uh, areas where um, experts are not even, uh, or citizens are not even in the room, or are we ready to look at shorter term approaches such as digital literacy and other kinds of solutions which were brought forward? And I wanted to chair if we might, we might ask the audience if there would be interest in you know, um, any of those particular approaches, over one over another. Okay, I will, I will give a uh, right to answer to Niger and Niger, please. Okay. Um, for me, I think we need we need also the journalists to have self-regulation. 
for instance, um, there's something we're doing in my country, they, we call it observatory. So the online publishers, they do observatory on fake news and share the same with, um, with the government. And um, our broadcasting uh, commission and uh, broadcasters, they, they continue to broadcast, you know, warn, advertise, warning people about spreading fake news. And um, you, you don't just get a message from your WhatsApp, you don't verify it, you keep sending it out. So it, it, it's something that, that, will, that, will, that will bring a lot of um, uh, issues and uh, might be, you, 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 are, you are not sure where the source is from. So you go ahead and it will, it will result into unintended consequences because um, we are divided somehow, whether it's, it's in my country or any other country, it, it's either it's color or it's religion or it's um, 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 uh, sex. So that would also bring about fake news. So I, I advocate <laughs> that the, the journalists should have self-regulation and they should do some observatory and share intelligence with the, with the government. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, it's time in running out. We, we have uh, some one and a half minute to do uh, answers. How about uh, uh, Jack, please? Okay, Jack Mok, please answer, please. Yes. Um, we, we didn't discuss very much about the solutions, um, so I can give you a little bit of personal uh, reference on that. Um, I think that we need to look for short-term solutions and long-term solutions that need to be tackled at the same time. Because the problem is complex, is a changing in society, is not simply uh, a, sh a different tool or uh, something that has changed in the technicalities. Um, I give you a, a, a concrete example based on the fact that the European Broadcasting Union is the association of public service broadcasters in Europe. When we have done um, fact-checking during the election campaign in Europe, the main problem we had was that we don't know exactly which are the news that are going fastly spreading in the internet. We, are, we have not the tools. This information are in the hands of the platforms. We don't know, and it takes a lot of time for us to check if the starting pro point of a certain fake news was a fake account or not, while the platforms they know very well since the very beginning. The fact that uh, Twitter cancelled 1,400,000 uh, um, fake accounts f just before the midterm elections means that they know exactly who are these fake accounts. So without the cooperation of the platform, the journalists can do nothing. And until today, I have to say, unfortunately, that the platform they prefer to uh, work to discuss with the government and say we will self-regulate, etc., etc., and this is not effective. And this brings the government to become upset and angry and go to hard regulation. I think that mm. the cooperative way is the right way to go, and the platform is not to be uh, afraid to cooperate openly with the with the professional journalists, because without the professional journalists, the, the problem will mm. remain uh, there forever. The last point is we need also to tackle the business model because if the business model of the media continues to be disrupted as it is today there will be no more professional production of information there will be no professional sources of information and you will rely as Marilyn said to the neighbors information that is not for me reliable I don't go to uh, my neighbor if I have a problem a serious health problem. I go to a doctor, and if you have a problem with information, you need to go to a professional that can uh, give you immediately if it's a real or a fake news. The long term, uh, and I want to answer to the Brazilian uh, journal, uh, student that was mentioned before, uh, it's not ideological to learn to uh, young citizen at school that uh, the preference of certain politicians to go to Twitter is motivated by the fact that they want to avoid nasty questions from journalists. This is a fact you need to know. It's like to learn to write and to learn to interpret it uh, correctly a picture. This is something that you need to integrate in the curricula, you need to integrate in, 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 in the life, uh, in, in the learning process. And it's a process where media and the educational system 
need to work together. This, I think that the government, the government can make a difference because they can introduce <coughs> this in the curricula, they can uh, instore a positive cooperation for a process that is life learn, uh, lifelong learning process. Because okay. mm -hmm. even my mother, uh, that is not going to school anymore, this mm -hmm. is the last time she went to school was 60 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the, the world has changed mm -hmm. and she has not the tools to understand uh, the problems. And so <coughs> need to be a, a, mm -hmm. a structural transformation of society that is needed. Okay, thanks for the info. And then I will try to uh, invite Luis to Brazilian Internet Student Committee. Could you please answer these questions? I would like to present an important view and maybe criticize by someone of you. I think there's a paranoia, maybe a little bit exaggerated. I think it's impossible at all to control fake news in, in, in the internet or in the web. And we must treat uh, the phenomena as something normal or uh, that comes with a new technology. Uh, I think that we cannot uh, try to control and to prohibit everything, uh, exception to hate speech, pedophilia, pedophile and, and terrorism speeches like this, but that everyone should be accountable. That means that everyone could uh, say whatever they want, but uh, having to answer for the consequences of, of their speeches. Uh, of course, uh, all of us agree that it's very hard to, to make evidence and to control the content. It's okay, we have fact-checking, we have uh, education, uh, we have uh, effectively to, to control business model, not to incentivize the use of fake news. Uh, we have to have more ethics. But I don't think that we have uh, the power or that is illusionary to control everything that is on the web. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you please, Iria, please, in Finland, Isaiah, please, please answer the question. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I agree with most uh, solutions here, but I, I want to, uh, you know, refer to what uh, the ICANN CEO, Joran Marvi, said yesterday, and basically, just to paraphrase, I think that he was saying that, uh, first of all, don't do any harm, which is, of course, the old Hippocratic oath of medi medical professors. But in this case, whatever you do, in, by legislation, by, by any, any means that may be quite blunt instruments, don't do any harm to the internet, which is a very fragile and complex uh, uh, construction. Two more points. Media literacy, yes. And uh, I think that somebody said, one of the youth IGS, IGF people said, it, there, it has been media edu education in schools is opposed because you should not teach any ideological things. Well, it's not ideology. It's just critical thinking. And critical thinking also is, is basis pretty much of our civilizations. But this media education needs to be introduced early. It's a primary school stuff. Kids who get their first smartphone, at least in Finland, at the age of six or seven, eight, they need some sort of guidance. And the last point, journalism. I mean, a good uh, portion of good journalism keeps fake news away. And, uh, and I think that we should, everything we do to strengthen journalism, everything we do to take care of the safety of journalism, uh, journalists, and, and, and strengthen the, the, the uh, newsrooms is, is good remedy against information disorder. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And then I will pass to uh, Pranks Aizjab. How, how do you find answers about these questions? Yeah, um, we talked about uh, how teaching uh, critical thinking, and we, we talked about uh, media education, but I think uh, that is a more global matter of education because 
when a, when a child or when an adult uh, can't, uh, can't read, uh, who just can read approximately, and uh, when uh, someone uh, thinks that a number says everything on a reality, a number alone, uh, all these all these facts uh, show that uh, it is a linguistical matter and more global educational matter. And in France, we we heard uh, often that there is a, a, a failure on our uh, educational system. It is not really like that, but and I think this is the really point that we need to develop to reinvent uh, not only media education but education to really uh, create citizens and not workers through through s s education uh, system okay thank you uh, we also have uh, some brazilian igf is online he bolivian. A bolivian okay bolivian and then his opinion will be led by the mo remotely moderate right now Are you okay? Are you? I just make most of this uh, moment to uh, to gain the same kind of a public opinion. Okay, very lovely. I'd like to suggest to you two options. First option: Do you believe fake news problem can be solved by the, some self-regulation or media literacy? Is per source. And second choice: That do we really believe the uh, fake news solution? by the law or very strong authoritative hand. Could you please ha raise your hand if you like the first option? Or, and then I will ask the second option. Just, just wanted to figure out what kind of... Okay, first of all, could you, if you, could you please raise your hand if you prefer some kind of the self-regulation uh, solution with uh, some enhancing of the media literacy. Okay, self-regulation, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, thank you, and then, is anybody who strongly support, or no, not support, prefer the kind of the national agencies uh, authority of authority by the law? Oh, not many people, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we do. So, so chair. Chair, it's Marilyn Kate asking, mm. are there people who would prefer a hybrid, part of mm. option one and part of option two? Okay, it's a good lesson because uh, in, in Asian countries, they really prefer the strong regulation. I personally believe it, it, that kind of regulation is going to be faced some constitutional examination review and then but personally, I think also is they going to be, you may, you may need a new institution of the fake news, uh, uh, new institution of the free speech in the age of the social media fake news area. Okay, and then Bolivian, please. <laughs> Hello, uh, Roberto Zambrana sent uh, a statement to be read and I'm read in, in charge of him. In fact, the practice of fake news is not a new issue. Written media such as newspapers or bulletins were used in the past, um, just a second here, in the past with the same purpose, to deceive and manipulate people, uh, usually for elect to allow a political purpose. However, the internet and social media have greatly amplified their, their effects. Through so social networks of popular instant, instant messages, applications such as WhatsApp, fake news appears in different ways. Recently, in my country, Bolivia, shocking uh, headlines with edited pictures and fake content are, are, be, 
being form formatted with no known and apparently true news websites. Um, then they are sent massively to groups and people who in turn make this content viral in, in a matter of minutes or hours. The effect is, is devastating for those affected. Unfortunately, people who receive one of these news with, without intention tend to forward this content. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, without any critical analy anal analysis and without assuming res responsibilities and consequences because although the authors or author may be committing an action that in some cases can be classified as criminal, the ones who retransmit this information become accomplices without know it. The main challenges are the difficult of identifying the origin of a fake content, whether the author is hiding in anonymity and using fake identities, the difficulty of performing a proactive and automated monitoring to detect or distinguish fake from real contents. Okay, uh, thank you. Oh. Uh, okay, let's wrap it up. Uh, this is session is was a great opportunity to how can we tackle the social media fake news try to which should try to affect the integrity of the elect election and then uh, social integration in this country and then it was great session and then thanks to the families and why don't you, why don't you give us a big applaud to the panelists please <laughs> oh, oh, oh. yeah and then it was great moment and then if you learn from the other countries a continent solution, and then uh, you, you should go go get back to the, your own IGF and then discuss more about that. There's no one clear solution of a fake news, but we will collaborate together to tackle the new emerging issue like this. Thank you so much.